Greetings! Thanks a lot for coming by PosterCentral.com's video blog today. I'm Pete Howard, and here it is! Rolling Stones concert poster from Carnegie Hall, one of the most prestigious venues in the world, and it's the final two shows of the Rolling Stones' very first tour of America, a tiny tour, <laughs> in June of 1964. Yeah, this was, um, this was a great moment, and I'll get to it in a second, but boy, that first tour of the Stones in June of 64, it was short, it was very odd. They only had one date on the West Coast, one gig, and it was not a big city, it was uh, San Bernardino, the Inland Empire of Southern California, sort of an odd pick, although the show was a, was a good success. Um, and anyway, San Berdu was followed by four shows at a state fair in San Antonio, Texas. That just, you know, seems seems like an odd selection. Um, and then a few more random shows, such as Omaha, Nebraska, and Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Now, I'm not knocking any of these cities. I live in a small town myself, but and love it. But they're relatively small for a tour of only nine cities in the whole country. And the Stones were a totally unknown quantity. I mean, you had to get a lot of people to draw from to really pad out the audience and get a full enthusiastic crowd, you know. Um, matter of fact, Bill Wyman, bass player for the Stones in the 60s, and most of their life, um, has written a couple of books on his experience in the tours and everything. Great books for any Stones fan. And he calls the tour uh, premature and ill-conceived. And uh, the Stones tour manager, Bob Bonus, actually said it was a strange tour. He said, one night we couldn't move. It would be so jam-packed and enthusiastic. And the next night there'd be like 300 kids there, you know, like an unknown band or something. So, you know, what can you say? But it was a, a short tour, and it finally caught up with them, by the way, in New Haven, Connecticut, when the show had to be canceled for lack of ticket sales, interestingly. But if you make it, if you can make it in New York, you can make it anywhere, right? And the Rolling Stones rolled into the Big Apple here for this, you know, for this pair of shows. And uh, they, you know, rolled right into town with a, a single sitting at a glorious number 74 <laughs> on Billboard, Billboard's Hot 100. 74. It had been languishing around number 80 for a month. And so they, <laughs> they were not a hit-making machine yet by any means. And that was a Buddy Holly cover, not even written by the Stones. Um, and their first album was out about three weeks ago and finally just hitting Billboard's charts, as a matter of fact, in the new Billboard magazine dated June 27th, which hit newsstands today, Saturday, June 20th. So the Stones were totally unknown, but Murray the K wasn't, so there he is. Murray the K, the fifth Beatle build above the Rolling Stones. Pretty wild. Um, and, uh, you know, he's tied closely to the British invasion, so it's a good thing to get his name on the poster to help ticket sales. Um, interestingly, Bill Wyman's book also says that Sid Bernstein was the promoter for these Carnegie Hall shows. And he had done the Beatles at Carnegie Hall four months ago to, you know, one of the most wild success stories ever. So where is, you know, Sid Bernstein's name on this poster? Instead, as you can see across the top, it says Billy Fields and J. Murr Productions. Well, as it turns out, Billy Fields was actually Sid Bernstein's co-promoter. And why Sid chose to let Billy put his name on this, maybe Billy did the lion's share of work, but Sid missed his chance to be on Stone's Carnegie Hall poster, now a coveted collectible. Um, but that's okay, the show, you know, the show happened. And as far as Jay Murr Productions, I mean, I haven't been able to find out anything, but I can give you, I, I would bet something of serious, um, you know, value that Jay Murr is a, it sounds like a word that's two names merged, right? And gee, could the Murr part be Murray the K by any chance, you think? Yeah, yeah, that's what I thought, me too. So kind of an interesting thing across the top of the poster. Um, and you know, it's kind of funny because notice if I come in closely, Murray the K is not presenting, he's being presented. So he is, you know, he's more well known than the Stones, and, and uh, so he, you know, he's on there above their name. So getting to the Stones, though, actually before their name, it does say England's newest sensations. And of course, you know, you and I might think immediately, we might go like, okay, Beatles, Carnegie Hall, and then the Stones. So Stones following the Beatles and so forth. But I think what they were referring to with England's newest sensations, right after the Beatles, I mean minutes after the Beatles, the Dave Clark Five hit the shores hard of America with a couple of top ten smashes, Glad All Over and Bits and Pieces. And even um, English duo Peter and Gordon had a, a number two record in the country right now with A World Without Love. So it wasn't a matter of the Stones are, you know, the second coming from England. They're the, um, you know, they're just one of the new wave of the British invasion, the newest sensations. So that's interesting to note for sure. 
And then you have the date on there on either side of their picture, Saturday, June 20th, 2.30 and 7.30 p.m. And ticket prices, three and a half, four and a half, and five and a half dollars. Doesn't sound like much to us today, but boy, that was pretty pricey for back then. I'm telling you, the night before, in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, the top price was three and a half dollars, and here it's the low price at Carnegie Hall. And, um, you know, in 64, acts like uh, James Brown and the Dave Clark Five regularly topped out at 375 to four bucks for their highest price. But, you know, you had the Big Apple, and you had uh, this, uh, the, the plush venue of Carnegie Hall, and so they charged uh, what they wanted and undoubtedly got away with it. So, um, interestingly, it also says on here, tickets on sale, there's only one place to buy tickets, and that was at the Carnegie Hall box office. But, of course, they didn't have to worry about a stampede of fans, because this was a group that only had the number 74 <laughs> record in the country and a new album out that hadn't done anything yet. So, And if you want to know more about this show, by the way, see that red line across the bottom? you got to go listen to WINS, which is, gee, just where Murray the K happened to have been a disc jockey and air talent, so that's pretty funny. Now, in the middle there, there's the widely used publicity photo of the Stones taken in London near the Tower Bridge with the Stones in jackets and ties. And, um, you know, it's uh, getting a little bit closer for that, but it's a picture you've certainly seen very well. Now, these two shows were definitely a roaring success. It was pandemonium there. Of course, it was pandemonium at San Bernardino on the opening date, not necessarily in between, like in San Antonio at a state fair. But they did, you know, the, the, these shows were wild, rollicking successes, fans rushing the stage and damaging the seats of Carnegie Hall. As a matter of fact, um, the first... The first show was so raucous that Bill Wyman reports that between shows, the Carnegie Hall management and the police came backstage and wanted the second show canceled. But the Stones held their ground. They knew a bunch of fans had bought tickets. But what they did as a concession is they went on a bit earlier. And, um, you know, which kind of sucks, I guess, if you arrive at showtime. But that's one way to, you know, it seemed like the place was probably packed already and they were stomping their feet wanting the act. So it's like, get out there now before they damage any more seats. Um, so, um... Nonetheless, even the second show, fans poured all over the stage, and Wyman called, of course, that's what the Stones wanted at that point. They didn't want it at Altamount, <laughs> but they wanted it in 64, and Wyman does call it in his book, a great way to end a very disappointing tour. However, that bedlam and damage got the Stones um, banned for life from Carnegie Hall, and Sid Bernstein even seriously admonished, and so he moved his gigs um, to the New York Academy of Music instead of, you know, Carnegie Hall. It'll be a long time before they saw a pop act again, I think, I'm guessing. So, that's a nice boxer. You know, it's a telephone pole poster all the way and 14 by 22 made by the E.J. Warner Poster Corporation out of New York City. It's made a lot of good boxers over the years. So that's it. Thanks a lot for coming by. The Stones, world's greatest, right? And right at the beginning. Great to see it. Wish I was there. Wish, even with the bedlam, I wish like heck I was there. Thanks for stopping by. Take care. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.